Hello, hello, YouTube. Heir of Carthage back, and I am playing Napoleon Total War on the Homestead map. You can see my opponent there is, I believe you say it, Achilleos95. He and I both had the same number of command stars, which I only have five, because again, Napoleon Total War isn't my greatest game. I played three battles today, one, two. One of them was a Pyrrhic victory. The one I lost, um, I was actually going to show you some of the replay, and the game quit too fast and it kind of made me mad because in the replay I, I did lose the battle but I very effectively beat an Ottoman melee rush um, I wasn't able to finish the battle correctly because my opponent made some intelligent moves um, but I wanted to at least show you how to defeat the Ottoman um, melee infantry rush since it's used so commonly online so I'm sorry I didn't get that the next time I beat an Ottoman melee rush I promise I will put it up because I want to show you the tactics of that now I'm playing on the homestead map the settings on this are actually medium cash large units so my army is going to be um, a little bit smaller than usual not a whole lot because I'm playing as Spain and Spain's units are very cheap and I'm going to take advantage of that since it's on medium cash I brought five guerrilla units and some of you saw my battle recently in the Aista Valley where I used guerrilla units to set up an ambush the ambush worked albeit I sprung it a little bit early um, this time I'm going to retry um, some ambush tactics and see what happens. So here we are. I've got um, five units of fusilier. I've got three units of light infantry. I've got one unit here of cazadores de Cataluna. One unit of voluntarios de la Coruna. Coruña? Coruña. I don't know how do you say it. It's got the little squiggly over the end. I think it's, it makes an Enya sound. Anyway, i got three lanceros. Um... And I'm setting up my, uh, I'm the red here on the mini-map, if you want to keep track of that. I'm deploying in the blue area, but on the mini-map, my troops are going to show as red. You can see that there's a lot of choke points and terrain in the center of this map. Small hills, um, but you can also see there's some cliff sides, uh, choke points that you can make use of here, a little forest for taking cover. Um, there's all kinds of little items in this map that you have to be aware of. Um, I really do hate this map for the most part, but I decided to play on it because I could use Spain's guerrilla tactics and show you some more ways to strategize your way out of a battle rather than to just, you know, go for a artillery duel or a frontal assault. Now, there are strategies that can be used in an artillery duel or even a frontal assault, um, so I'm not trying to say it doesn't take strategy to run those kind, it's just that I think you see those more often on Napoleon. So, anyway, I've set up three units of my uh, guerrilla units here in this forest. I've got my Cazadores de Cataluna, my Volunteer Line Infantry, and my Lanceros de Castilla. And right here I have, hidden in this uh, forest, my Tia Tiradores de Cantabria. These guys are pretty decent skirmishers. Um, when you consider Spain's typical morale, you can see that they're hidden quite well in those woods and not visible to my opponent. And on this far side I have one unit of hidden um, basically light dragoons. It's Cazadores Voluntarios de Madrid. These are um, missile cavalry. So they're mounted line. Alright, let's take a look at my opponent's army. He's going for a quality army um, and he has quite a lot of artillery. Now bringing more than one piece of artillery on medium settings to me is ridiculous because um, it costs so much money. Yes, it'll be very powerful because there's not very many units on the field, but you could easily become outflanked by your opponent depending on the map. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't do well. I'm just saying depending on the map. So let's take a look at his cavalry here. He has some Chasseur Acheval. He has Grenadiers Acheval. Now, these are some tough-as-nails heavy cavalry. So I'm going to have to look out for these guys. They're mounted Grenadiers, basically. Um... So he's spent a lot of money on those Grenadiers of Cheval. Here he's got Fusilier the Line, some Voltigier skirmishers, and I think that's his only skirmish unit. Here he's got a six-pounder foot. Here he's got Artillery a pied. Um, these two artillery pieces on this map, to be honest, are wasted, because these hills here are going to block almost every good angle that you have unless you move your artillery. Now, horse artillery might be useful on this map because of its ability to move quickly, but otherwise you should bring howitzers. That's the reason why I didn't bring any artillery, is because it would be so hard to position. Here he's got a unit of old guard. His general is just a general staff. And let's take a look at the rest of his infantry. Fuselier the line. Fuselier the line. Fuselier the line. And out here he has a unit of guard seamen. These guys are also extremely tough guard unit. Something that I would want to steer clear of. I'm um, playing as Spain. 
because they will absolutely shred my units. They got some cool skins there. And then out on his far right, he's got this unit of Empress Dragoons. This is another unique unit to France. Very cool unit. Very tough Dragoons. I think they have about 11 morale. Um, and keep in mind, all my guerrilla units have pretty crappy morale. I did give them all um, a chevron. Uh, at least I think I did. Maybe I didn't. That might have been a different battle. Some of them have a chevron, uh, some do not. So in any case, yeah. His units are qualitatively extremely superior to mine. So let me explain my strategy. My opponent has spread pretty long and thin, which is a pretty good idea for him because he can just guard the exits to all these choke points on the map. Um, however, my opponent has made a few critical mistakes, in my opinion. Here he has this unit of uh, Voltigir, which is his only skirmish unit to be found. Because he spent so much money on artillery, he really should have dropped the artillery op yet and brought some more infantry. Because Spain um, has access to extremely cheap, large quantities of um, skirmishers. And Voltigir are um, only 60 strong, and they only have 100 range, so um, not the best unit. He's uh, firing his artillery at my cavalry, which is probably a smart move. He might get lucky and get a hit or two, and that's pretty much what he's going to hope for. So let's take a look at the, uh, the mini-map spread here. You can see my main force right here where I'm indicating, one of my hidden units here. I'm moving all three of my, uh, my Lancer Cav that were with my regular army over to my right flank in an attempt to make an early Cav knockout. This is a risky move as my opponent's cavalry is so much better than my own. This is my hidden unit of uh, mounted Cazadors right here. And then there's my other three units hidden in the woods, as I showed you. So there's kind of a good overlook of the battlefield, so that you can keep a close eye on everything that's going on. I'll uh, make that just a little bit smaller now. These Grenadiers à cheval will absolutely trash um, <laughs> my units. However, I'm hoping my Lanceros might be able to get a good charge on some of his horse units and kill a whole bunch of them even though I may not win the entire fight, plus I could always support with my mounted Cazadors, but I don't really want to spring those Cazadors until a key moment in the battle. So as of right now, my opponent only sees these three units of Lanceros. He is not aware of this Cazador, uh, mounted Cazador unit back there in the woods. My opponent is playing very defensively. That's fine. Some people would say he's camping. Whatever. Call it what you want. Um, yeah, he's camping. Uh, but, you know, I, I hate, like, the constant rants against camping because there's weaknesses to camping, too. People do it on Halo all the time, too. It's like, oh, they're camping, they're stupid campers, and they get so mad. Okay, yeah, don't get me wrong. It is kind of annoying sometimes when people just sit still. But you know what? I, you know, if you're camping, like, let's say on this game, for instance, when you're camping, you lose the initiative. Like this guy, I've totally got him outflanked. And um, so I'll let him camp all he wants uh, because I have him outflanked really badly and it's going to spread his forces thin and create weaknesses. On Halo, oh, if people want to camp, I mean, there's a real simple solution to beating it. Don't go attack them. <laughs> Make them come attack you. So, I mean, it's just one of those things where, don't get me wrong, I get annoyed by it. I see the point of the people who um, get really upset, but don't, you know, I don't think you need to get that upset about it because it's very easily defeated. So back here, I've actually pulled my Gorilla Lancers out of hiding. I don't know if my opponent sees them or not. I'm going for a side charge on his Empress Dragoons. I formed into a diamond so that um, my men will kind of hit him good. But, I mean, these are just Gorilla Lancers, so I don't even know how effective this charge is going to be. I personally think it should have been effective. But, um, yeah, these units are just way better than mine. So even with my huge charge bonus of 33, my men only killed five of his. And so that's a fight that I'm not going to continue. So I'm going to pull my Lancers out of there immediately because they're going to get their butts handed to them. Um, I mean, your only chance with Lancers against Heavy Cav is to try and um, get a real good charge on them. And I got a good charge and it still didn't do anything. I should have just gone clear behind him and charged him completely from the rear. Anyway, I tried to lure his, um, his Empress Dragoons back here into these woods and he didn't bite, unfortunately. So I almost got to spring a trap on my opponent, and here I'm making him run this old guard around. He's using them to help fend off my lancers, but to be honest, he's never going to catch me. His Shashira and Cheval is fast enough to catch my light cav here, but, um, but you know I can still cause some damage. I don't care if I even lose these lancers, um, because they're just really cheap cavalry. They, they cost 570 uh, you know, dollars, whatever you want to call it, 570 cash. Um, 
And if you can just do some damage with them that is worth that 570 cash, then you're set. And right here, it's totally worth the 570 to me to just cause a whole bunch of disruption in my opponent's back lines while I can attack from the front. And here's where I'm attacking from the front. I've teamed up on this unit of Fuselier and I'm absolutely slaughtering them with my light infantry. There you can see them just getting cut down and they're going to rout. Let's see what my Lancers are up to. Here I've charged the enemy general in an attempt to do a quick general knockout. Um, I almost kill the general, but I have to run out because my men are starting to lose it. So while my opponent is busy elsewhere and not paying attention, I'm going to go for a rear charge on this uh, unit of Fuslier, and you can see that I automatically kill about 20 of them. So my opponent took unnecessary losses there. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. Here's my other unit of Lancers. I hit his artillery uh, up yet. Now remember, this is a $1,000 uh, piece of, uh, or 1,000 cash piece of equipment, and it just got beat up badly by a 570 cash um, depleted unit of Lanceros. Now my opponent did a good job fending off my Lanceros with his guard seamen. And now, now that these guys are just all beat up, I'm just going to go ahead and make one more charge on his Empress Dragoons to see if I can cause any more damage. His Empress uh, Dragoons um, did manage to walk in front of my hidden units there in the woods, and that's why they're all beat up. You can see the smoke coming out of the woods. Men are running, sir. Yeah, I got hit by an artillery shot here, and my men routed before I could do anything to his Empress Dragoons. That's a testament to the um, terrible... Um, the terrible morale of Spanish units. So you can see I have my opponent badly, badly outnumbered, but um, my units have extremely terrible morale, and being as it's on medium cash, I can't upgrade any of my infantry, at least not very much of it. I upgraded some of my cav, uh, so I mean my men will route very quickly against these superior French units, especially since he's got guards on the field. So some of you might be um, tempted to uh, bash on my opponent for having not brought very many troops, but I, he has a very real chance to win this battle if he wants to um, if he wants to do it right. Again, though, I still I have him outflanked, and I'm pushing my um, light infantry advantage here in the center. I see his guard seamen marching up, and these guys are a target of opportunity. But look, these guys are so tough that my men are scared of them all the way from here. So you can see my um, my morale is already wavering. But I'm gonna pull up and um, get some real nice kills on these guys. But you can see his cannons are absolutely unloading on my light infantry, and it's affecting their morale badly. And he's also got this unit of Fuselier, so I'm going to run away, because my uh, my light infantry will route very fast there. But I did get 20 of his guard seamen killed, so um, that was totally worth it for me there. Again, the guard seamen's 1,000 um, thousand cash, so you definitely don't want to be losing a lot of those guys. So I'm going to back up to the safety of this, relative safety of this hill and allow my light infantry to start duking it out with um, his line infantry here and you can see that I'm going to move in some uh, forces to reinforce my um, very beat up light infantry and I'm also starting a skirmish fight with his Voltigeur over here I still have a unit of Lancer and uh, Casadores uh, de Madrid alright I have taken my infantry out um, over on this flank and I make sure that these uh, Fuslia of the line go ahead and uh, get shattered and I'm gonna start pushing hard on his flank now that the uh, fight has begun so here's the proper usage um, of the guerrillas uh, of Spain I'm gonna pull these guys out now and, and come hit my opponent in the flank while he's busy in the center alright so here's the um, little picture of the fight from above this is the main engagement right now there's not much uh, going on elsewhere in the battle because I want to push my advantage in this vicinity so I have a huge firepower and number advantage here. My opponent has a huge quality advantage, plus he has his cannons reinforcing with um, canister shot at fairly close range. So he's going to be dealing me um, quite a number of casualties. But you can see that I totally have these guard seamen outflanked now, and my general is moving into the vicinity to uh, bolster the morale of my men because you can see that my morale is wavering. Let's take a cool look down here in the, uh, in the battle. There you go, pretty scenic looks pretty darn good actually. So now that my general is in the vicinity you can see that my morale has been bolstered. I'm just using um, a general staff which again is pretty risky because Spain's morale is pretty cruddy as it is. Let's uh, let's watch these guard seamen fight it. Check it out my men have the hill right here to the side and they're just gonna start unloading down into these guys. 
see him dropping there. Look how quick these guys can fire, though. Guard seamen are deadly accurate, and they can reload very quickly and put a lot of fire under your men. I believe guard seamen are better than the young guard, but not as good as the old guard, so that's kind of where they fall, so very good unit. You can see here, even taking flank fire from my Spanish troops, uh, they're holding their ground pretty darn well. You know, remember, my Spanish troops' accuracy is like 35 or 40 at best. These guys are probably like 50. And then my reload speed is probably crappy, and then theirs will be good. But you can see that their morale is actually starting to waver, and they route just because they're under so much fire. And then also, I just hit them from the flank with these, um, these light infantry here. They are positioned on this hill, and they're able to take shots in there. Now my opponent charged this um, volunteer line infantry unit, and the reason why I always bring one of the guerrilla line infantry is in case your opponent charges cavalry, um, your guerrilla cavalry and light infantry will not be able to fend off heavy cav, and so that's why you bring a unit of line infantry. But here you're going to see a testament to uh, the quality of um, France's heavy cav. He had two units of um, Empress Dragoon, or no, one one Empress Dragoon, one Grenadier Acheval. Now remember how I told you how tough these Grenadier Acheval are? Here they are just fighting a square. Uh, just straight up fighting it there. And they do not route easily. Grenadiers Acheval are a cool unit. I'd like to bring them more often, but they cost a fortune. It's like a thousand dollar cav unit. But check them out, man. They're absolutely tearing up my square. I mean, they just rape that square. And here they are, they're going to go for another charge into my light infantry. And I did not see that coming, so, I mean, these Grenadiers Acheval are giving me a horrible time. And there's only 20 of them there, but my men uh, are just having an impossible time killing them. Because they're so tough in a melee. So, all I can do really is to take shots at them with my infantry that's in the area. Let's take a look over here, I'm starting a cavalry skirmish on the opposite flank. Here's my opponent's uh, Shashir Acheval. I'm shooting them with my... Uh, with my mounted um, Cazadors. And then I have my Lanceros unit right here. And I'm just going to wait and get one more volley, and then I'm going to charge my cavalry and take down these Shasharash of all. I'll let you watch that. I've defeated um, his Voltigeurs that were in that choke point. So that's what was going on right there. And here comes the charge. Check that out. I got some good volleys off right when he charged. So this is going to be the end of his Shasharash of all. They're hit from behind by my Lancers. There's a cool cavalry fight going on for you. Let you watch the carnage. Again, you can see his French units actually hold out for a minute because, again, they're just very, very superior to my own qualitatively. So my opponent has lost the battle here. I finally routed his Grenadiers Acheval with fire from multiple um, units, but not before he caused me some extensive damage with them. So all he has left here is this Fuselier of the Line unit. Or, sorry, this is an old guard. He moved up his old guard. Um, he didn't probably spread them out quite enough, so they're, they're not able to take full advantage of their firepower. And I have them outflanked. Again, that was the whole purpose in my strategy here, was use my guerrilla units to outflank my opponent's qualitatively superior army. So there we go. That's just me uh, taking out the old guard. And here I am causing a massive ruckus in his backfield. So I'm attacking his general, and then I'm also charging into his regrouping um, line infantry so that they uh, will not be able to lend a hand in this fight. The French general staff is chasing me and trying to kill me. In fact, that might be the French general right there. Dude with the medal on his chest. Actually, I see several of them with medals on their chest. Never mind. Yeah, there's the French general uh, bodyguard chasing me. I think that might... Yeah, that's him right there with the hat. There he is right there fighting. So let's see if I can get the French general. Yeah! Eat a lance, buddy. So, as if the French weren't screwed enough, um, they've now lost their general, and they're double screwed. So all my opponent has left is a few um, very depleted units whose morale is wavering. So a quick cavalry charge, and this battle is going to be over. So I hope you enjoyed the tactics here. Make sure that you watch that mini-map close um, to give you a good idea um, of the strategy that I used against my opponent. Now, my opponent counted on quality, and I think he could have won this fight with his army if he was a little more aggressive. 
um, because his army was so much superior. And if you look at the kills, he got just pretty much the exact same number of kills as me. So here's another video for you um, that you got to see some guerrilla tactics with Spain. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see more guerrilla tactics, I'll try and get some for you because there's lots of other good maps to use these guys. And when using Spain, I highly suggest using the guerrilla tactics because otherwise you don't have much advantage uh, because uh, Spain's artillery isn't very good and their units have very poor morale. So when you're playing a Spain, you need to use that advantage to be able to deploy and make your opponents wonder, um, are there guerrilla units on the field? Do I have to watch my flanks? And just, yeah, you want to use that to full advantage. So good game to my opponent, Achilles95. Hope you enjoyed the video.